Hello everyone and welcome back. This is episode 4 of my Connects Robot build series. Before I begin doing anything with this, um, I guess I'll just mention what I was doing in the last episode. I was planning on making a control panel that went that way and that's why all of these inputs are pointing in that direction. But what I will probably end up doing is having some stuff back here to control the right head, so that means that this input here, is, I'm going to switch it back this way. And I'm mainly doing this because I already have this huge tower taking up space, so I might as well not take up space in front of here, because I want to keep this thing short so it'll actually fit in my building area. I'm going to be working on the control mechanism for the right head, the thing that's going to go right here and the control panel for the actual robot will likely go around where these towers are like maybe off to the side right here this is only one of the towers of course but it can still be off on one of them one of the things that I should probably mention is why the heck the tape is dangling like that I'm doing that to allow the tape to be detensioned when I'm not using it and I think in the last episode I hardly turned this on at all. At the beginning I had it on a lot, but not so much at the end. Right here I have these little pieces that keep it um, from stretching out, and you can tell that because it's not totally straight. So that's relieving the tension mainly at the top of the chain where the last section ends, and there's only two of those sections going up. That, that basically splits the tape into thirds and allows it to stretch out a much slower rate than it would if it just um, was sitting there all day long. It's been several days since that last scene and I know this might be getting confusing by now but I'm actually deciding to have the control panel out front again like I had originally planned. The main reason is because from back there you wouldn't really be able to see um, from in front of the towers, which would be in the way, and that wouldn't really be good when you're trying to program a robot to see where it is. So the control panel will be up front again, but this does make it easier because now all of these control mechanisms can come out here instead of having to go up and around back there. And I actually had that previously constructed, but I didn't really get much video of it because I didn't want to spend too much time for that part. I extended the crankshaft, which used to end somewhere inside of there, and now it comes out front here. So now whenever I refer to this, I'm referring to what controls the tape um, during the right mode. I need to explain what I've made here. So what all of this is for is to control the transmission when we're writing anything and the reason it's so complicated is because I don't want it to be actually hooked up to this transmission when the robot is running normally and I don't really want to have to mess with the pins right here when I'm writing a program so I have this other thing that kinda clips onto it and you can see it disengaging right there and this is how it will be normally so when it's like that the transmission isn't touching it at all so as, as you can see, it switches without touching that. And this, all of this is hooked up to the input that controls the motor versus the crankshaft. And I ha I've shown this before, but I'll just show it switching again. So these things are hooked up right here, which switch it in place. And this one right here will control the transmission back and forth. And this is only when the robot is in write mode. At the control panel there's going to be a lever that controls the right head and one that controls this transmission. And you're going to have to push both of those up or down or into neutral depending on where you want the robot joint to move. I think I mentioned this in episode 3, but just to clarify why we need all of this stuff, 
when we are running the robot normally, so when we switch this over to the motor, we don't want anything connected to this transmission that doesn't have to be, because that the more stuff that is on here, the harder it'll be for these levers to turn, and that could cause it to be inaccurate at the end. So that's why I made it to where this swings downward and disconnects from that white rod. The next thing we have to do is make the control panel tower and hook up all of these linkages up to the top. Some of them will be linked together and some will be separate, but I'll get more into detail of that later. And I actually already have the tower built from when I had put it in the back. I've gone ahead and rearranged this whole thing. Hopefully it will fit a lot better where it is. And here is the control panel tower that will make it be at a, at a good height. And right now I have some of these levers set up and the crank is going to be like that, but I might just change this real quick and make the levers be just a little bit different to save some space. Down here, I've just kind of extended all of these inputs so I can see them better. There are five of them in total, including the crank, which is right there. Alright, here is the new version of the control panel. Uh, right here is the crank, like I mentioned before, but these levers I decided to make them be right beside each other, and that saves space and it'll make it easier to press them both at the same time instead of individually. I was able to slim the tower down to only a blue rod wide and that helps it not be as bulky and it'll save some space in the front. I've also added this brace that goes from the control panel to the tower and that helps it to be a lot stronger, especially considering when you press these levers. That's the direction that it has to be um, strong and in. As far as this direction goes, there will be other control panel modules next to it. So now I will go over how I connected everything together. The most important connection here is the right head, which I've already shown this area. So that it comes down through here and goes straight up to the lever right there. And I had to especially design this connection all the way down to have as, as little flexibility as possible. And that's why there are no gears here, because that would make it uh, not work very well. And I even had to use kind of a double jointed linkage right here. So using these little black hinge pieces allows it to not only bend like this, but also up and down a little bit. And the same goes for the one over here, you can see that it's attached loosely. And I'll probably add a counterweight so that this is more balanced and doesn't um, just slam down like that. Another thing that's really important is making sure the right head is in the very center because if it's not, it will interfere with any of the pins that are pushed in either direction and so I added this detent right here and it makes it a lot easier to know from the control panel when the right head gets to the middle. This part is flexible and it kind of lifts up a little bit. So when you're pressing it you will know without having to look at it that it's in the center. The transmission switch is right next to the right head switch and it will be pressed at the same time. So it goes across here and over to there and then straight down to a hinge type of thing and then it goes straight down to save space. It's not like this one that can have a lot more um, flexibility. And you'll notice that there are these things along the way that make the rods more adjustable. So it comes down here and it goes across to the transmission. These wheels right here are just to make a detent for the transmission switch and you can see that there's a piece there that's flat on the orange connectors but I might end up removing it because it doesn't really tend to affect it much. So this lever goes all the way either there or there and let's see if I can film it moving. 
there's the moving in that direction and back to neutral and then in the other direction it might be kind of hard to see but it's back in neutral because these gears can turn lastly we have the crank which just goes straight down and this one just rotates so there's nothing really special about this and then there's some gears down there and it goes across and I'm going to do that connection and this connection later on I'll be able to put them somewhere around here I think now we are finally ready to run some tests for the writing and to see how accurate it is so basically the way this thing is controlled is you push both these levers in whatever direction you want to go at the same time so let's say I push them down and it's gonna be hard to film the whole thing happening at once but the right head just moved in that direction over there and the transmission went in that direction so that means that pin that is over there would have or will press the reed head over there when it's actually running and when you want to go back to neutral you have to do that and this one has to move a little bit farther before going back to the middle just because of the uh, flexibility and then if we want to go back in the other direction we can do that and that just pushed the pin over there then back to neutral. This will be the testing arm. Of course the final version won't look like that. So we are about to write our first program so that's pretty exciting. I have all of these um, detensioners taken off and the one thing to note before I get started is that I'll have to line the pin up with this white rod right here which is about at um, eye level and that's just because of the resolution of the tape and the way that the reed head can only activate um, when a pin comes so it can't activate in between so that's why we'll have to line it up on that mark whenever we want to start or stop the robot arm so I actually already have a pin in there set so I will just set this in that direction like that and let's uh, say so I'm cranking the crank right now and that is advancing the tape and also turning the arm in the desired direction so let's maybe go 90 degrees and then I will look up here and line it up as best that I can the nice thing is that you can reverse the direction of the tape since the crank is hooked up directly to it. So that looks lined up to me. And there's the next pin that's about to be written by the right head. Right in there. So let's see, to push it in that direction I will do this. And that just push it in that direction. I'll put the right head back to neutral and I'll put this at neutral. So now the robot is um, disconnected from the tape and we just wrote the next pin. So now if I wanted to say pause for a little while then I could do that so I guess I will advance the tape forward a little bit and then I could line up another pin. I'll have to work on it's kind of hard to line up because it kind of skips forward so I'll have to work on that. One thing I actually forgot to do was to activate the erasing module there. That's just in case any pin is um, out of position which I think some of them are so let's next make it go that way 180 degrees so I think that is this direction so uh, that just wrote the pin and move that one back to neutral and this one will stay like that until it gets finished so we'll start going this direction 
and I think I might reduce some of the um, the gearing so it goes over faster. So that's about right there. So at the end, this will be pushed back like that, and I'll have to work on the. Um, this looks like it's kind of not going underneath like it should, but it still writes just fine. And I'll bring this one back to neutral. And that is the end of that step. I'll write a few more, then come back. Before I actually run the robot, I will note that it's been about three weeks, maybe even four weeks since I last ran it, and this wheel has... Um, went down another blue spacer, so I guess the chain stretches out about one blue spacer every three weeks as far as the uh, wheel going down. So I guess I'll have to um, hope that this doesn't take that much longer to build. I've programmed the robot. I think it first went that way, so it lines up to the yellow rod, and then I had it go that way. And then I had it go to the red rod, and then to the gray rod and then I had it go all the way back down to the beginning so we will see if that's actually what happens when I turn this on and hopefully this cord won't get stuck anywhere so I'm not really sure how much time the last program had on it, but it moves pretty fast. Okay, I think that wasn't supposed to happen. I think there's a pin in there somewhere that I forgot to erase and I'm really not sure which one it is. I might try to track it down and test it again, but I need to make sure that it actually did what I wanted it to do, whether it started where I wanted to or not. Okay, I'm pretty sure I found the pin that was causing the problems that, uh, that actually wasn't erased when it was supposed to be. That's not an issue with the erasing module, that's just um, something I forgot to do before I prepared the test. So let's see if it works now. Okay, it went 90 degrees almost, that's 180 degrees to the red rod the gray rod and back to the beginning. Nice. So I'll have to rewatch the video, but it actually turned out really well. When it was over at the red rod, for example, I think it was off in that direction a little bit. That's actually a lot more accurate than I expected it to be. So uh, that's really encouraging. I didn't know it would work that well, um, just starting out. I think I will end the episode here on a positive note. Again, I'm really happy with the accuracy of it, and I might be able to make some adjustments to it um, to make it even more accurate, but I will do that later on. One thing that I wanted to mention, uh, somebody in the last video made a comment about having signals on the tape to to let you know, like, um, maybe divide it into increments or let you know when the program is about to end, and I really like that idea. And I will probably make, like, different colored pieces, maybe have a black rod or something. I do have this light gray connector right here, which is supposed to signal the start of the program, so I'll probably try to make some sort of indicator that can tell when that um, area comes up. That way I will know when to start the program and how much time I have left on it without having to just guess. 
Right now, I'm pretty much at the point where I'm confident enough in this to build the other two modules, so that is going to be this entire thing, the tower and the control panel and the transmission controls um, times three, so I plan on having them staggered, so one here, one there, and one there, and it will be about three feet wide from here to there. So I will only have about this much rug space left at the end of it. So hopefully I can make the robot arm uh, fit within that space, and I plan on making it fit in here underneath the support tower and stuff. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.